Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. Today, I am about to share a journey I undertook to the era of the boy King Tutankhamun, the youngest pharaoh of ancient Egypt, a figure that has long fascinated historians and archaeologists. To the ordinary eye, Tutankhamun's story might be one of a child thrust onto a throne, but to me, it was a tale of courage, wisdom, and perseverance wrapped in a mystery that spanned millennia. It all began when I set my time machine to the year 1332 BC, right when Tutankhamun ascended to the throne. As I emerged from the hazy vortex of time, I found myself in the city of Thebes, the heart of ancient Egypt. The air was thick with the smell of the Nile, the murmur of the bustling city, and the whispers of the royal palace's intrigue. The boy king was only nine years old when he took the throne, a child burdened with the responsibility of an entire nation. Yet, as I watched him from afar, I saw not a boy, but a king, his gaze steady and his demeanor regal. There was a maturity in his eyes that belied his tender years, a wisdom that spoke of an old soul in a young body. Tutankhamun was born during a time of religious upheaval in Egypt. His father, Akhenaten, had discarded the traditional Egyptian pantheon in favor of the monotheistic worship of the sun disk, Aten. After his father's death, young Tutankhamun was left with the monumental task of restoring order and faith among his people. Standing in the crowd, I watched as Tutankhamun, guided by his advisors, reversed his father's controversial religious reforms. He reinstated Amun, the king of the gods, as the chief deity, moved the capital back to Thebes, and began the restoration of temples desecrated during his father's reign. Despite the political turmoil, Tutankhamun's reign was a period of artistic and cultural renaissance. As I walked the streets of Thebes, I witnessed the magnificent buildings rise under his rule, the elegant statues crafted in his likeness, the vibrant paintings that captured the spirit of his reign. There was no doubt that Tutankhamun was a beloved figure. His people hailed him as the living image of Amun. I watched as he led religious ceremonies, his youthful face a picture of solemn concentration, his people's eyes filled with reverence and adoration. The young king was not just a ruler, but a living god to his subjects. In my travels, I've often found that power can be a lonely place. Yet, Tutankhamun was not alone. By his side was his queen, Anki Zanaman, his half-sister, and wife. Theirs was a bond that was both political and deeply personal. Together, they faced the challenges of their reign, their youthful faces etched with the wisdom and strength of a king and queen far beyond their years. I saw them laugh, I saw them argue, and I saw them rule. They were two halves of a whole, bound by their shared destiny. Despite the tragedy that marred their lives, the loss of two daughters, their bond remained unbroken. Their story was a testament to the resilience of love in the face of adversity. Yet, the young king's reign was not without its challenges. His rule was plagued by economic difficulties, political unrest, and territorial disputes. As I observed the young pharaoh, I admired his diplomatic skills. Despite his age, he was able to negotiate with rival kingdoms, signing treaties and forging alliances. He understood that the key to Egypt's prosperity lay not only in military strength, but also in fostering trade relations and maintaining a peaceful coexistence with neighboring powers. I saw him embarking on building projects, restoring Egypt's damaged infrastructure and temples. These efforts not only reinforced his popularity among his subjects but also brought about economic stability. It was awe-inspiring to watch a young ruler handle such tasks with maturity and foresight. But Tutankhamun was not just a king and a diplomat. He was also a warrior. I witnessed him lead his army into battle, clad in golden armor, his eyes filled with determination. Despite his young age and frail health, he was a commanding presence on the battlefield, his courage inspiring his soldiers. The times when he wasn't ruling, battling, or negotiating, he was often found participating in religious ceremonies. Tutankhamun's deep devotion to the gods was evident in these moments. I watched as he led rites and offerings with solemn reverence, his actions strengthening the bond between his people and their gods. In my time in ancient Egypt, I also came to understand the role that religion played in Tutankhamun's life. As a pharaoh, he was considered the intermediary between the gods and the people. This belief reinforced his position and gave him the divine right to rule. I watched as he balanced this divine role with his human responsibilities, his actions reflecting a deep understanding of his dual role. He was not just a ruler, but a shepherd guiding his people, ensuring their safety, 
prosperity, and spiritual well-being. However, life as a pharaoh was not all glory and power. It was also filled with personal trials and tribulations. The young king's health was frail, plagued by various ailments. I watched as he struggled with his health issues, yet he never let them deter him from his duties. Despite his physical challenges, Tutankhamun never lost his spirit. His resilience in the face of adversity was nothing short of inspiring. He continued to rule with strength and wisdom, his actions reflecting a deep sense of duty towards his people. However, the strain of his responsibilities and his failing health took a toll on the young king. In his ninth year of rule, at the age of 18, Tutankhamun passed away. His death sent shockwaves through Egypt. A nation mourned the loss of their young king, their living image of Amun. I watched as preparations were made for his burial. The Egyptian belief in the afterlife dictated that the king be provided with everything he would need in his journey to the afterlife. Thus, his tomb was filled with treasures, gold, jewelry, furniture, chariots, and more. It was a sight to behold, a testament to the respect and love his people had for him. The young king was laid to rest in the Valley of the Kings, his body mummified in accordance with Egyptian traditions. As the funeral procession wound its way through the streets of Thebes, I could feel the sorrow in the air. Yet, there was also a sense of reverence and awe, a recognition of the legacy that Tutankhamun had left behind. His tomb, originally intended for a lesser noble, was smaller than those of many other pharaohs. But it was intricately decorated with scenes from his life and the afterlife, reflecting the importance of his journey to the realm of the gods. As the final rites were performed and the tomb sealed, I could sense the end of an era. Even though Tutankhamun's reign was brief, it left an indelible mark on Egypt. The boy king had managed to bring about a period of stability and prosperity after years of turmoil. His reign marked a return to traditional values and a cultural renaissance that resonated long after his passing. As I walked the streets of Thebes following his burial, I could feel the tangible impact of his rule. The restored temples stood tall, a testament to his religious reforms. The art, the architecture, the culture that had flourished under his rule, continued to thrive, a legacy of his reign. But Tutankhamun's story doesn't end with his burial. In fact, it was his death that led to his enduring fame. Thousands of years later, in the year 1922, his tomb was rediscovered by the archaeologist Howard Carter. This discovery made headlines across the world, thrusting Tutankhamun into the global limelight. Carter's team unearthed a treasure trove of artifacts from the tomb, each more exquisite than the last. Among the most notable was the golden mask that covered the young pharaoh's mummified face, a breathtaking piece of craftsmanship that has become synonymous with Tutankhamun. But perhaps the most important discovery was Tutankhamun's mummy itself. Through modern scientific techniques, researchers were able to learn more about his life, his health, and the circumstances of his death. The young king, who had ruled millennia ago, became a subject of fascination in the modern world. Yet, for all the scientific discoveries, Tutankhamun's life is still shrouded in mystery. Questions about his parentage, his reign, and his death continue to intrigue historians and archaeologists. His story is a puzzle that is yet to be fully solved, a mystery that adds to his enduring allure. But as I stood there in ancient Thebes, it wasn't the mystery that captivated me. It was the life of the boy king, a life lived with courage, wisdom, and a deep sense of responsibility. It was the story of a child thrust onto a throne, who grew into a leader loved by his people. As I navigated through the rest of my journey in ancient Thebes, the city felt different without its young king. The buildings, the people, the air itself seemed to mourn Tutankhamun's loss. But life, as it always does, went on. The boy king's legacy, however, was etched in every stone, every artifact, and every heart in the city. I spent my days studying the many aspects of life during Tutankhamun's reign. From the artistry of the statues and carvings that captured the beauty of that era, to the hieroglyphs that held the wisdom of the ancients, everything spoke volumes about the young king's impact on his kingdom. I visited the temples that Tutankhamun had restored, the walls of which bore the stories of his reign, his religious reforms, and his devotion to the gods. The care and effort that went into their restoration clearly reflected the young king's dedication to his people's spiritual well-being. I spoke with the people of Thebes, their stories, their memories of the young king bringing Tutankhamun to life. Each tale, each anecdote added another layer to the complex, intriguing personality that was Tutankhamun. 
It was through their eyes that I truly began to understand the boy king. As the sun set each day, I would find myself by the Nile, its waters reflecting the golden hues of the setting sun. The river had been a silent witness to Tutankhamun's life and his rule. As I watched its gentle flow, I felt a deep connection with the boy king, as if the Nile was sharing its memories of him with me. As days turned into weeks, I realized that my time in ancient Egypt was coming to an end. I was due to return to my own time. But I was not ready to leave, not yet. There were still so many stories to hear, so many facets of Tutankhamun's life to explore. In my final days in Thebes, I visited Tutankhamun's tomb once again. As I stood before the sealed entrance, I felt a wave of emotions. Here lay a king who had ruled thousands of years ago, a boy who had carried the weight of a kingdom on his shoulders, a pharaoh whose story had captivated the world. It was there, in the silent stillness of the Valley of the Kings, that I truly understood the magnitude of Tutankhamun's legacy. He was not just a historical figure, but a symbol of resilience, courage, and wisdom. His story was a testament to the power of human spirit, a tale that resonated across time and space. Until we meet again, farewell.